feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp tank. But it's a- Welcome back to another episode of The Shrimp Tank. Coming to you virtually from Seattle, the Pacific Northwest, and heck, even once in a while, even north of the border. Now listen, if you want to learn how to start, grow, or run a successful business, this right here, this is the podcast for you. This is where we find that street smarts and book smarts collide. Hello again, I'm Dan Whedon, and my co-host today is Michelle Bomberger. We are excited to have our guest, Kara McKegg from per- Pepper's Personal Assistance. Say that fast a few times. Pepper's Personal Assistance. Welcome, Kara. We will be with you in just a moment. Everyone, you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and on YouTube. We are all over the place. I like to say we're ubiquitous. We come to you as a podcast from about a dozen different cities, not just Seattle. We're in Atlanta, Boston, Boca Raton, a lot of different places around the country. Now, before we bring on Kara to learn more about how to make your life way easier in a crazy, hectic world. Hello, Michelle Baumberger. How are you? It's great to see you today, Dan. Thanks. And you're on three weeks in a row. I know, I know. I was told it was a one one week a month commitment and here's week number three, but this is so fun. I'm happy to be here. Good. Well, you know, when you have the fifth week hosts and then a, a quick switch on the calendar, uh, it worked this way. Hey, I got a question for you, Michelle. I, I know you're younger than I am, but I think we're probably enough uh, in the same realm to say, do you remember the TV guide? I do remember the TV guide. Listen, as a TV junkie from way back, I, I know that I used to run, literally run across the street to my mailbox. I can't remember the day of the week. It may have been, you know, Friday or something like that for the next week's TV guide because I needed to see who was on the cover, right? You got to see who's on the TV guide cover and what was going to be on TV. And you know what? If you were like me, you didn't know it was on TV unless you opened up the TV guide, Right. Well, I have a different story about that because I grew up overseas. Oh. So things like, do you remember that commercial jingle? No, we didn't have that. <laughs> and so my my memory, remembering of TV Guide was when I came to the U.S. to visit family and my grandma would have it sitting on the table. That's hilarious. Now, are you, so did you, you remember Seinfeld? You watched Seinfeld a little bit, right? Yeah. Well, there's a great TV guide episode that, that featured Al Roker. And, and so those are, you know, cause, cause uh, George's father uh, collected every single TV guide. And I just, I just remember TV guide. Now the reason I bring up this silly conversation is TV guide was something that we used all the time. And I mean, all the time, it was daily that we used a TV guide. And today, I don't even know if TV guide exists anymore. You know, the way we, the way we get television, I, 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 I just go to the guide on my, on my TV and I find out what's on. And, and I've got to believe that in our life, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we used to do that we're not doing anymore or don't want to do. And that's where we bring on Kara McKegg from Pepper's Personal Assistance. Kara, I got to believe that your crack staff of personal assistants are doing a whole lot of things for other people, for your clients that they no longer want to do. Welcome and tell us a little bit about your business. Thanks so much. Um, So I am the CEO of Pepper's Personal Assistant and our whole mission is to make life easier. for you to outsource those tasks at home that you no longer want to do. So um, our probably our most popular task is um, laundry. Um, nobody wants to do laundry um, <laughs> and uh, managing vendors. So, you know, getting, getting people in there to fix all those things in the house that need to be fixed or replaced um, that nobody wants to deal with, especially in Seattle where it, it's hard to find all the vendors, they're all very busy. So we take care of, of all of that and have our recommended vendors that provide a lot of value to our clients. 
Wow. So I have laundry. I have vendors. <laughs> I have a lot of other tasks I can think of to, to uh, ask about. But I'm curious what your inspiration was in starting this business. Yeah, so I was, um, well, first of all, my background has always been in supporting um, people. Um, that's what I've always found joy in doing is kind of, you know, um, lifting lifting people up and making their life easier, um, mostly in, in admin type work. So I was um, lucky enough to be a stay-at-home mom for eight years. And um, when my youngest started kindergarten, I was ready to get back in the workforce. Um, but he ended up getting half day kindergarten. So I had to get creative with um, how to kind of dip my toes back into to working and um, decided to try out, um, you know, helping people um, with things that I enjoy doing. So um, that's kind of how it started. And it was a bit of a side hustle for five years. And then as my boys got older, I was able to, to grow the business more. So, Kara, I've been on your website and researching for today, and it's an excellent website. Everybody sh should go to it, and we'll make sure that you, they have a chance to, to learn where it is. The, I, I was actually, I don't want to say I was shocked, but I was somewhat shocked at the number of different things. You said everybody has, you know, laundry is number one, but you're among your services are just a lot of different things uh, that, that as I think of, you know, busy executives, uh, they don't have to be executives, they could be business owners, they could be people who are working and, and just gone a lot. Go yeah. through a little bit about some of the other, aside from laundry, things that you do, and what is your normal standard business model with the client? Uh, is it is it just once in a while, or is there are there some mm -hmm. kind of contractual things? Yeah, so there are a lot of tasks that we do, but we've actually narrowed it down to the tasks that we do really well. Um, you know, in January it's going to be ten years in business, so we've we've learned a lot um, in those ten years and figured out where we can bring the most value for our clients. Um, and so it, you know, we focus only on household. Um, we're not doing, um, you know, any kind of office admin type work. We're not doing childcare. We're not doing um, cleaning beyond, you know, loading the dishwasher and laundry and sweeping um, up the Cheerios in the kitchen kind of thing. So, um, so, you know, we try to focus on the things that we know we do well and we'll help you find those things that maybe we don't do, um, you know, and taking that on. So our clients, um, our minimum package is 10 hours a week um, and we focus on long-term um, relationships. Um, you know, that, that's a big part of our value is that our goal is to know what you need before you do and we're taking ownership of um, getting those things off out of your headspace. Um, you know, you're not worrying about um, you know, if it's time to change the filters and the furnace and that sort of thing, we, we take care of all of that. So. Wow. Um, sounds like a, a really unique person that you would be bringing into your team. How do you go about finding the right people and making the right match? Yeah, that's um, probably the biggest piece of our success is um, making sure that we find the right match. So we do a, a pretty deep dive with the client to find out exactly what their needs are, what kind of personality they work best with, um, you know, figuring out all the details so that um, we can find the right person. Um, and then we have, you know, a very intensive um, interview process. They go through three different interviews. We do the reference checks and the background check and um, and, you know, we, we have our ways of making sure, like, we literally have a checklist, um, you know, everything from do they like dogs to, you know, are they okay preparing meat, you know, um, if they're vegan may not be a great fit for, you know, the family that loves steak dinner. So, um, uh, sorry, my thing fell out here. Um, so yeah, that's that's a big part of what we do because we want them to be there for years and um, to make that that's a big part of what makes life easier um, for the client. 
so you know it's so funny you're talking about the laundry the dishes and and cooking day <laughs> that's there's a lot just even in that and i can see how 10 hours a week at a minimum would go one of the things that yeah. we discussed uh before we came on is that you can now work all over the state and and i don't know if that mm -hmm. was necessarily something that came out of the pandemic as a as a need but as as people are listening to this anywhere in the state of washington whether it be spokane or in Paulsbo where i live or vancouver or down below mm -hmm. you you have a, a wide range where your personal assistants are are doing work for people talk about uh how that developed and how would somebody like say in spokane uh access a personal assistant yeah so um you know pre-pandemic i feel like our world was a little bit like our how we viewed things was a little different and um you know one of the things that's very important to me is our culture um for employees and we put a lot of effort into attracting and retaining really great people. Um, and so in my mind, I thought we have to have, you know, in-person quarterly meetings, you know, meetups so people feel connected. And I feel like this past, you know, year and a half, we've, we've found ways that we can still stay connected um, and make sure that people feel supported and still have that um, high touch, um, you know, coaching with, uh, PA. So, um, you know, we decided to um, open it up if it's the right fit, you know, if it's the perfect client, we know that we can help them and make their life easier. Um, you know, we're going to hire that, that person. So it's the exact same process. Um, you know, the, if somebody is in Spokane or Wallabella and, you know, needs help, they can just contact us and we'll go through the, the interview process and making sure that it's a good fit for, for everyone. So as I'm hearing you, I'm thinking your business is pretty dependent on your employees going into people's homes mm -hmm. to help them out. So March a year ago, <laughs> What did, what did that look like for you and and how did you how did you adjust? Yeah, it was really tricky. I think one of the reasons why we were most successful is that we really got on top of it before, you know, we were always ahead of the game with um, keeping an eye on what was going on with the CDC and the governor and um, we our main um, goal was to make sure everybody stayed safe and healthy and so that was how we made all of our decisions was kind of like you know obviously as a business owner it was a scary time it was you know there were times i didn't i wasn't sure that peppers would be around for the 10th year um but we always um you know looked at our values and made decisions based on that um the other thing that was just incredible was our clients. Um, we really couldn't have done it without them. They were so generous and, um, you know, we kind of worked with them individually and most of them continued to pay for half of their package um, so that we could continue to pay the employees so that they didn't have to worry about paying the bills. Um, and we actually, in the long run, it ended up being a really great opportunity because we had all of these employees getting paid but not working in the home. Um, and so we did a lot of training on, you know, different things that they could do remotely. Um, I'm trying to think of all, like we literally each week had a training of like how to use Trello, how to use Slack, you know, helping people up level their skills. Um, we even had like, some of the employees do a training on, you know, how to cook a chicken breast and roast vegetables. And, you know, just try to get really creative of like, how can we use this time well? Um, and, you know, we had a check-in system as well, where we were constantly seeing how people were doing in their personal life and, you know, what was going on with them there. Um, and then when we were able to get back in homes, we had a policy that made sure everybody was safe. And, um, you know, we were able to get through the whole pandemic without a single COVID case um, with employees or clients. So, you know, we were pretty proud of that as well. 
Well, you know what? It's hard to believe, but we're hit, we've hit our first break of the day. We're going to take a short break to hear from today's Spotlight sponsor. And when we come back with our guest, Kara McKegg, founder of Pepper's Personal Assistance, for our Hot or Not section of the show, we're going to find out what kind of lists Kara recommends. Don't walk away. We'll be right back with more of The Shrimp Tank. Your, bi your business is a valuable achievement, your livelihood and your legacy. Every day, you are asked to balance business opportunities and legal risks. But engaging legal adds complexity and expense. You deserve to experience business law the way it should be, practical, responsive, approachable, and transparent legal solutions to support your business in every stage. With Equinox Business Law Group's General Counsel Services, you get a corporate legal department tailored to your business needs. Let us tackle those contracts, HR, partnership, and IP issues so you can get your back to your most important work, seamlessly moving your business forward. To learn more about Equinox's fixed cost, all inclusive legal services, visit our website at equinox.law or email contact at equinoxbusinesslaw.com. Equinox Business Law Group, business law the way it should be. Well, welcome back to the Shrimp Tank, where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders in the greater Puget Sound region and beyond. I'm Michelle Bomberger, co-host today with Dan Whedon, and our guest is Kara McKegg with Pepper's Personal Assistance. We're going to launch our next segment, Hot or Not. Dan, Kara, you want to kick us believe off? It, yeah, Kara, believe it or not, I've been waiting since I've, we've had you coming on the show to, to say this, because normally I will go to our guests and say, Michelle and I are going to pepper you with questions. And now I actually get, <laughs> there's a tie-in. I don't know, I'm, I'm a little bit odd, but we're gonna pepper you with questions uh, that we're gonna ask you if, if something's hot or not, and then you're gonna tell us why or why not. Uh, unfortunately, at the end, you win absolutely nothing, but we'll have some fun anyway. So I mentioned lists, hot or not, right? Let me ask you this way, which one is hotter, paper or electronic lists? Oh boy, you know, it's a funny one because I'm very much electronic, um, but most of our staff is paper. So I, and I'm not sure what that's about. Um, I always find it fascinating. <laughs> well, I'm all about, you and I are on the same page. I'm all about electronic because paper lists always seem to get misplaced. I don't know if it, if it was like yeah. that for you, but I, I'd always lose the list. Now I just have to lose yeah. the phone to lose the list. And otherwise I'm okay. Nice. Yeah, lists are hot, whether it's electronic or paper. I'll okay. <laughs> well, I put a vote in for paper. That's just the, my, my bias. So, yeah. Um, all right. So, I am a person who really likes to go to the grocery store. So, which is hot, grocery stores or grocery delivery? Well, you know what? Actually, my favorite is, is the Fred Meyer pickup. Um, you order it online, you pull up to the parking space, you call them, say you're there, and they bring it out and put it in your trunk. So it's a little bit of both because I think they put a little more effort into picking the right things because it's their brand um, as opposed to, you know, some of the other um, delivery options, you know, they're not as uh, picky about the produce and that sort of thing, so... So Kara, Kara, this question probably took on a whole new meaning about March of last year. Hot or not, disinfecting everything that comes into the house, <laughs> maybe even the dogs, I don't know, but disinfecting yeah. everything that comes into the house. Yeah, I would say today not. Um, it definitely was something that, you know, our clients appreciated um, back before we knew more. Um, but I will say that we will continue suggesting to use that, um, you know, the hand sanitizer in particular, because I don't know about you, but it was nice not being sick for over a year. <laughs> um, and I do think there, there's something to that. So. All right. You didn't, you didn't mention dog walking, but I have a leash for my cat. Is cat walking a thing? 
Wow, you know, I'm not sure that we've done that. We have a lot of clients that adore their cats. There's a lot of cat parents, um, and we have uh, employees that are huge cat lovers. So it definitely is something that we would attempt. <laughs> My cat just hopped up here to to make sure that he puts oh, his nice. in. So, <laughs> so, so we Michelle, would be happy to. Michelle, what I, I have to ask because I know the Captain Jack who's a dog, Kara, by the way, uh, needs a leash because if not, he would be completely unleashed and running somewhere else. Are you, is the cat going to run away? Oh yeah. The cat will definitely run away. Whether the cat will walk with you is oh, a totally see. different thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I got that's it. not leash trained, you're saying. So maybe first step would be to get somebody to train the cat for you. You could take care of that. Too. Yep. When they just fall down in the grass, it doesn't really do the trick. Uh, you and I are going to have more conversations about this, Michelle, but I, I, I have a question for Kara. So you would mentioned this a little bit in the opening segment, but I wanted you to, to make sure and, and, and clarify, this is all personal things. You're, you're, you're yeah. not helping, you're not a virtual assistant for, uh, you know, somebody who's maybe acting as a, as a, professional services provider, a consultant, a bit, something like that. This is all, this is all personal things. That's where your niche is. Is that correct? Yeah. So when I started the company about 10 years ago, it was kind of an emerging thing. In fact, I had to connect with somebody in the UK to find out more about her business because there wasn't really anybody in the US that um, had the idea that I had. Um, and so, you know, she was a personal assistant business, but I found as I grew the company that people do get confused because there are companies that have personal assistants that help their staff, right, with office stuff. So if I could rewind, I probably would have called us Pepper's household assistants, um, but, you know, here we are. So. <laughs> so We've started to make travel plans, right? It's very exciting. We can start to go places. But what I'm finding is, is that where we used to kind of wing it, you know, just show up, everything now requires a reservation because they're managing numbers. So I'm wondering, are travel agents a thing now? You know, we have not been able to find a travel agent. I'm sure they're out there. Um, but yeah, that's something that I'm not sure what happened to the travel agent, you know, because that was definitely a thing, uh, you know, pre pre uh, internet on our in our hands. But um, yeah, we haven't been able to to do that. Yeah, I find that to be really time consuming right now because everything yeah. everything you want to book requires a physical booking, and yeah. it's great to have somebody who could <laughs> who could yeah, do that. Yeah, we can we can do that. We we book travel for our clients a lot or trying to get those reservations, you know, that's another thing as people are traveling. You have to book even restaurants like months ahead, um, you know, or keep an eye on it, <laughs> you know, to find those those cancellations. So Kara, that begs a question for me, how much of the work can be virtual? Because it sounds like I mean, you're doing laundry, you can do some cooking, you can go in and mm -hmm. sit with the dog or the cat, walk the cat, whatever. You, you can do some of that, but it sounds like there is a fair amount, you know, working with vendors, setting up reservations. How much virtual work are your, your employees doing? Yeah, I would say we're probably 90% in person. Um, and then, you know, there is like you can from home call, you know, to make an appointment for a fence install or, you know, those kind of things. But uh, most of the tasks we're doing are in person. All right. Is hot or not? Let's go back to our theme. Marie Kondo. Oh, um, I would say probably lukewarm now it definitely was hot a few years ago um but we still have clients that are like can you Marie Kondo my life you know and um so we want to make sure to find the person that that can do that for them but um I I find some of her stuff super interesting others I'm like I don't have time to think my thoughts but you know <laughs> it's a nice idea so <laughs> 
So hot or not, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman, obviously hot. <laughs> I've been a fan since I was like six. So. Um, so do you remember yeah. the Linda Carter days? Oh, for sure. I had the underoos and the whole the whole thing. Yeah, I used to sneak them under my clothes to go to school when I was like in first grade. You know. <laughs> See, I always thought Linda Carter, even to this day, was she looked like the cartoon character Wonder Woman more than anybody else I think I ever saw. Yeah. Yeah. I went to I went to Underoos immediately as well, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> they were the best. I miss those days. So can you can you share just kind of one of the one of the funniest things or or most unusual things that you guys have come across in in the work that you've done? Yeah. Um I think probably in our early days when it was you know, we were kind of just doing more one-off jobs. We'd get some some really interesting things. These days, it's a little more straightforward. I'm trying to think if there's anything uh, fun that I could share. But one of the um, most fun was we had a client who was getting married on April Fool's and didn't want to tell their family. And so they wanted to make the announcement, you know, to the whole family at like a barbecue that they got married. And so they needed somebody to be the witness. And um, so the, the personal assistant got to go to the wedding. So it was very joyous, um, you know, at the, at the courthouse or whatever, just to sign the paperwork, but that was super fun. That is, that is, that is, that is a, I would have never thought of that. Let me ask you this, because I, I've got to believe, you know, we were talking dogs, we're talking cats. Everybody seems to have an animal uh, somewhere. I, I, I don't know. It's rare to find somebody who has no pet at all, maybe even birds. I, I don't know. But uh, I've got to believe that there's been times where, uh, it's just been an eye. One of your assist, personal assistants walks in and they see a Great Dane or something they weren't expecting <laughs> to see, or, or you know, how much of a how much of a challenge have dogs, cats, or other animals been in this? I mean, has it caused any issues? Um, no, I mean that's one of the things we learned. We want to ask ahead of time, like what you know, what is in the house. We did have this was a long time ago. We had a. Um, personal assistant that had worked, been working for the client for six months. They were a perfect match, but the um, client got a bird, like a parrot type bird. And the PA was terrified of birds oh. and had to quit, you know? So it was, that was one of our learning lessons of like, we need to know these things ahead of time. So it was unfortunate, but it happens for sure. So you mentioned cooking classes um, and, you know, I, I love the idea that you use this kind of downtime for training and building up skills with, with your team. Um, you know, does, do your clients typically use um, personal chefs as well, or do they using your people kind of, that seemed to be a thing for a while, certainly the, the pre-mix kits and that kind of stuff. So how do you see people doing yeah. that? we're all over the board with that. We have some people that, you know, are getting the meal deliveries. We um, have some people that have chefs um, and then quite a few, most of our clients, I would say, just have a cook very basic, you know, produce, protein, um, salad, you know, that sort of thing. We actually just hired um, for a new client, a former chef, and it, the client is in heaven right now. <laughs> They're, they're very happy with their, their kids are eating the meals and, you know, they're not having to, to think about what's for dinner tonight when they get off their, you know, eight Zoom calls, so. Well, we are at that point to take our second break. We're going to take a short break to hear from our sponsors. And when we come back with our guest, Kara McKegg, with Pepper's personal assistance for our Plead the Fifth section of the show, we're going to ask her to speak on behalf of her employees about her. It'll all make sense when you come back. We'll be right back with more of the Shrimp Tank. Plead the Fifth is brought to you by our corporate sponsors. Ideal Life 360, Cornerstone Financial, First Underwriters Insurance, Kitsap Sun Newspaper, 
please visit our website at www.shrimptankpodcast.com forward slash Seattle to learn more about these terrific companies. Now back to the show. Welcome back to the Shrimp Tank, where we interview the best and brightest CEOs and business thought leaders throughout the Puget Sound area and beyond. I'm co-host Michelle Bomberger here with Dan Whedon, and our guest today is Kara McKegg with Pepper's Personal Assistance. Now on to plead the fifth. And so if you have to call on Michelle, if you have to text her and ask if you need to plead the fifth or not, uh, that's allowable. <laughs> uh, you get to plead the fifth once. We're going to, again, pepper you with questions. I just love doing that here. Pepper you with questions uh, about uh, life, about business, about a lot of things. And and uh, hopefully you'll answer them all, but you can plead the fifth just once. Uh, I sometimes, Carol, like to pill for good questions uh, from uh, the other shows. And this is one I hear the Atlanta hosts asking. So I thought I'm going to ask you. So if we asked your employees, what would be the one thing that they would say, we'd like to see Kara change? We'd like you, she, we think she can improve. What, what could she do better? What would your employees say would be the thing that you could do that would, uh, would be better? Um, probably my operations manager would tell me to slow down. I'm a, a quick start. I get lots of ideas and I have her because she's the one that goes, have you thought about this, 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 and this before we, we implement? So, um, yeah, she would definitely say that. I, I don't think that's unusual with CEOs though. I think that that's probably, uh, you would probably get a common answer on that one. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can I can relate to that conversation as well. <laughs> One of the things I wanted to ask you is, you always seem so grounded. I mean, I've known you for a while through mm -hmm. Entrepreneurs Organization, and you know, always grounded. What riles you up? Oh boy, <laughs> um, my teenage boys. Um, <laughs> that's probably my biggest button, right? They they know exactly the buttons to push to to get me started. So. Um, yeah, I'm not always grounded. <laughs> well, as a former teenage boy myself, I, 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 we raised girls. So I, but I do remember, I do remember <laughs> the boys thing. So I've been, we've been asking this question of everybody for this year. It's, it's kind of one we'll look back and, and recap. So, you know what? I'm taking you away from this business. You're going to have to start a brand new business and it's mm -hmm. going to be based on a hobby what would be the hobby oh. you'd base a brand new business on and why? That's super easy because my dream is to retire and start a hobby farm. Um, oh. I'm a huge lover of animals. I would love to have like goats and sheep and, uh, you know, all the things and have a garden, you know, the strawberries. And um, this year I didn't get to did you get to plant a garden and then missing it for sure. So, um, well, Carrie, you're the first person to actually use the word hobby in the business as a hobby. So that, <laughs> that was good. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go back to the, uh, the teenage boys. I, I know that you take time to, uh, spend with them a couple days a week. How do you get the teenagers to come with you? <laughs> Oh, um, you know, one of the biggest things is going on vacation. Um, we actually just went to Maui last week um, to celebrate my son, you know, it's a senior trip. He just graduated from high school. And I just find so much joy in um, going away with them because they turn into little boys again, where they're like in the waves and they're like, mom, watch this. They're in the pool, you know, doing the flip. Mom, watch this. They it's like they want to be engaged. We're away from Xbox. We're away from chores. You know, all those everyday life things, and that you know when we feel the most connected. Yeah, it's it's neat how much time you're you're able to spend with them and um, the activities you guys you guys do. So we've we've all gone through quite a bit in the last year, year and a half. So I I always like to ask this question, and it can be either personal or professional, or if you have one for each, that's fine. Uh, what were you most proud of in the last year? Oh, um, well, there's a lot. Like, we survived remote school, which was probably by far the biggest challenge, um, navigating that world and, you know, keeping up on everybody's mental health 
you know, in uh, the day-to-day um, struggles, as well as with my team, you know, the employees, you know, we, we definitely got way more vulnerable and, um, you know, made sure that they were being cared for. And, um, you know, I think they definitely felt supported. Everybody felt supported while trying to support myself as well, <laughs> you know, trying to fill my own cup, I think was, um, you know, we were successful in that, but the check of village for sure. So, you know, your, your business is about, you know, helping people to manage their lives better. So what are the things that you hire out instead of doing yourself? I'm super good at outsourcing. <laughs> That's one of my superpowers. But um, I actually had a really great coach that was like, you know, outsource as much in your business and at home as you can afford. And I already kind of had that mindset, but it gave me the permission to do it. Um, you know, one of the things I think that stops people from hiring peppers is they feel like it's bougie, you know, that we hear that word occasionally, or like, what are people going to think that I, I should be able to do all of this myself. And I'm a big believer in outsource what you're not great at. And there's people out there that love to organize, love to do laundry, let them do that. <laughs> And then you can focus on your family, self-care, you know, your business. So I have um, a house cleaner. Um, my new PA is starting next week, which I'm super excited about. Um, I'm trying to think. I, I outsource all kinds of things. My son wanted to hang out with his friend, and I, I got an Uber for the friend to come over to our house because I couldn't, I didn't have the time to do it, you know. So there, there's so many things out there um, to help. So that made me just wonder, you know, I and mean, then some people are a little bit, um, uh, <laughs> they, 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 it's hard for them to give up things, right? And they don't think about it. But mm -hmm. for those that even are, what are some of the common, common tasks or activities that somebody might not even think they could delegate if they, you know, what are people missing? Because again, you mentioned laundry and cooking, that, that seems to be the low hanging fruit. What are some of the other services that you see as, as people could, could outsource if they thought about it? Yeah, definitely. So one of the things that we do is we um, create a household guide and it also has a home maintenance calendar in it. So we, you know, over the years, we've learned like, what do you do in October? What do you do in March? You know, trying to get ahead of like getting the gutters um, cleared or painting the house and getting that on the books months before it starts getting busy. Um, you know, so I think that that is a, a huge um, value add and the headspace that that takes um, for people to try to remember all of that or to create that themselves. Um, we've got that already figured out and ready to go and somebody to take care of it for you. So I love that. Fun. No one teaches you that, you know, no one teaches you yeah. to do all of these things to maintain the house. And so not only does it take up headspace, a lot of times it's not even in the headspace. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Which is worse. Have a lot of people. Yeah. Especially women. I feel like um, moms in particular, most of us think that we're supposed to do it all and that, um, you know, we don't need to reach out for support, but it's, it really is an important part of being able to take care of your family. And, you know, some people just aren't good at being a housewife and that's okay, you know, or a homemaker, um, you know, stay in your zone of genius and let, you know, the other people take care of that piece for you. Yeah. So Dan usually asks this question, but I'm going to get to it first today. So you're at a dinner party and you're sitting next to someone that you don't know. What is the first thing you say to them? Oh, that's, um, I like to talk to people about travel. I feel like it, it gives you a little insight into um, who they are outside of their day-to-day, -day, you know, things. And um, I love exploring new places. So I love hearing about new places that people have gone that maybe I haven't gone to. Um, yeah. 
one one quick last question. I know we're coming up to the end, and Michelle's going to ask you uh, how to, how people can contact you. So maybe this will lead into that as well. Where do you where do most clients find you? What what is your mo what marketing do you do that seems to be the most effective? Uh, or or where do people find you mostly? Yeah, so right now people, um, it's SEO is what we've, um, you know, invested in. And so people are searching for, you know, personal assistant or household assistants and we pop up, um, you know, on the first page. But one of my goals for this next year is to figure out how to reach more people um, because we still get people calling us that are like, how have you been around for 10 years and I've never heard of you? <laughs> you know, so we're, we're trying to get some more visibility out there. Um, but we're on um, Twitter, Facebook. Um, I guess that's about it. Yeah. And LinkedIn. Um, so Great. Well, Kara, thank you so much for being a guest here on the Shrimp Tank today. If our listeners want to get in touch with you, what are the best ways to reach you? Yeah, so um, my email is pepper at paseattle.com. Um, and then I'm on um, LinkedIn. Um, they can connect with me, Kara McCaig, or um, we also have a business page. Um, and then Facebook and Twitter under Pepper Personal Assistance as well. And the website is uh, PA Seattle? Yes, paseattle.com. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, everyone, make sure to check out the replays of all of our podcasts at shrimptankpodcast.com slash Seattle. And wherever you get your podcasts, iHeartRadio, Google, SoundCloud. Follow us also on our show's social media pages, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. So listen, as you know, we come live streaming on Facebook every week. Our next live show will be next Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific. And my co-host that week will be James Alberson. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for listening. Uh, until we meet again, be safe, be well, and be prosperous. Because until next week, the shrimp is back in the tank. So long. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp.